Hey there everybody, I hope you had a wonderful day today. So I'm going to read chapter 2 of Ramona Columbi, age 8. At Howie's house. Now be nice to Willa Jean, said Mrs. Quimby as she handed Ramona her, her lunchbox. Grown-ups often forgot that no child likes to be ordered to be nice to another child. Ramona made a face. Mother, do you have to say that every single morning? She asked in exasperation. Deep down inside, where she hid her darkest secrets, sometimes Ramona longed to be horrid to Willa Jean. Okay, okay, I'll try to, rem to remember, said Mrs. Quimby with a little laugh. I know it isn't easy. She kissed Ramona and said, Cheer up and run along, or you'll miss your bus. Being a member of the Quimby family in, in the third degree was harder than Ramona had expected. Her father was often tired, in a hurry, or studying on the den room table, which meant no one could disturb him by watching television. At school, she was still not sure how she felt about Mrs. Whaley. Liking a teacher was important. Ramona had discovered when she was in first grade. And even though her family understood, Ramona still dreaded that the, the part of the day spent at Howie's house in the company of Mrs. Kemp and Willa Jean. Those were the bad parts of third grade. There were good parts, too. Ramona enjoyed riding the bus to school, and she enjoyed keeping Yarnay from getting the best of her. Then another good part of the third grade began the second week of school. Just before her class was to make its weekly visit to the school library, Mrs. Whaley announced, Today and from now on, we are going to have sustained silent reading every day. Ramona liked the sound of sustained silent reading, even though she was not sure what it meant, because it sounded important. Mrs. Whaley continued, This means that every day after lunch, we are going to sit at our desks and read silently to ourselves any book we choose in the library. Even mysteries? someone asked. Even mysteries, said Mrs. Whaley. Do we have to give book reports on what we read? asked one suspicious member of the class. No book reports in your sustained side of the reading books, Mrs. Whaley promised the class. Then she went on. I don't think sustained side of the reading sounds very interesting, so I think we will call it something else. Here she printed four big letters on the blackboard, and as she pointed, she, re she read out, D-E-A-R. Can anyone guess what these letters stand for? The class thought and thought. Do everything all right, suggested someone. A good thought, but not the right answer. Don't need a reader, suggested Yard Ape. Mrs. Whaley laughed and told him to try again. As Ramona thought, she stared out the window at the blue sky, the treetops, and in the distance, the snow-capped peak of Mount Hood, looking like a giant licked ice cream cone. R could stand for run and A for ant. Drop everything and run, R Ramona burst out. Mrs. Whaley, who was not the sort of teacher who expected everyone to raise a hand before speaking, laughed and said, Almost right, Ramona, but have you forgotten you're talking about reading? Drop everything and read, chorused the rest of the class. Ramona felt silly. She could have thought of that herself. Ramona decided that she preferred to stay inside the reading to dear because it sounded more grown up. When time came for everyone to drop everything and read, she sat quietly doing her sustained silent reading. How peaceful it was to be left alone in school. She could read without trying to hide a book under her desk or behind a bigger book. She was not expected to write lists of words that she did not know, so she could figure them out by skipping and guessing. Mrs. Whaley did not expect the class to write summaries of what they read either so she did not have to choose easy books to make sure she would get her summary right. Now if Mrs. Whaley would leave her alone to draw, too, school would be almost perfect. Yes, sustained silent reading was the best part of the day. Howie and Ramona talked it over after school and agreed as they walked from the bus to his house. There they found two of the new friends he had made at Cedarhurst School waiting with their bicycles. Ramona sat on the camp's front steps. Her arms clasped around her knees, her sustained sign the reading book of fairy tales beside her, and looked with longing at the boys' his two bicycles while Howie wheeled his bicycle out of the garage. Because Howie was kind, and because Ramona was his friend, he asked, 
Ramona, would you like to bring my bicycle to the corner and back? Would she? Ramona jumped up, eager, eager to take a turn. Just once, said Howie. Ramona mounted the bicycle, and while the three boys silently watched, teetered and wobbled to the corner without falling off. Having to dismount to turn the bicycle around was embarrassing, but riding back was easier. At least she didn't wobble quite so much, and she, and she managed to dismount as if she were used to doing so. All I need is a little practice, thought Ramona, as how he seized his bicycle and run off with his friends, leaving her with nothing to do but pick up her book and join Willa Jean in the house. Now that Willa Jean was going to nursery school, she was full of ideas. Dressing up was one of them. She met Ramona at the door with an old curtain wrapped around her shoulders. Hurry up and have your snack, she ordered, while her grandmother sat watching television and crocheting. The snack turned out to be pineapple juice and rye crisp, a pleasant change for Ramona. Even though Willa Jean stood impatiently beside her, excuse me, watching every swallow until she had finished. Now, I'll be the lady and you be the dog, directed Willa Jean. But I don't want to be a dog, said Ramona. Willa Jean's grandmother looked up from her crocheting, reminding Ramona with a glance that Ramona's job in the Quimby family was to get along at the camps. Did she have to be a dog if Willa Jean wanted her to then? You have to be the dog, said Willa Jean. Why? Ramona kept an eye on Mrs. Kemp as she wondered how far she dared in going on to resisting Willa Jean's orders. Because I'm a beautiful, rich lady, and I say so, Willa Jean informed her. I'm a bigger, beautiful, or richer lady, said Ramona, who felt neither beautiful nor rich. But certainly did not want to crawl around on her hands and knees barking. We can't both be the lady, said Willa Jean, and I said it first. Ramona could not argue the justice of this point. What kind of dog am I supposed to be? She asked to stall for time. She glanced wistfully at her book lying on the chair, the book she was supposed to read at school, but which she was enjoying so much she brought it home. While Willa Jean was thinking, Mrs. Kemp said, Sweetheart, don't forget Bruce is coming over to play in a few minutes. Bruce who? asked Ramona, hoping Willa Jean and Bruce would play together and leave her alone to read. Bruce who does a wee-wee in the sandbox, was Willa Jean's prompt answer. Willa Jean, Mrs. Kemp was shocked. What a thing to say about your little friend. Ramona was not shocked. She understood that there must be a second Bruce at Willa Jean's nursery school, a Bruce who did wee-wee in the sandbox. As things turned out, Ramona was saved from being a dog by the arrival of a small boy whose mother let him out of the car and watched him reach the front door before she drove off. Willa Jean ran to let him in and introduced him as Ramona expected. This is Bruce who doesn't wee me in the sandbox. Bruce looked pleased with himself. Mrs. Kemp felt a need to apologize for her granddaughter. Willa Jean doesn't mean what she says. But I don't wee me in the sandbox, said Bruce. I wee me in the... Never mind, Bruce, said Mrs. Kemp. But now, what are you three going to play? Ramona was trapped. Dress up, was Willa Jean's prompt answer. She dragged from the corner a card and piled with old clothes. Willa Jean shoved one of her father's old jackets at Bruce and handed him an old hat and her blue flippers. She unwound the curtain from her shoulders, draped it over her head, and tied it under her chin. Then she hung a piece of old sheet from her shoulders. Satisfied with herself, she handed a torn shirt to Ramona, who put it on only because Mrs. Kemp was watching. There, Willa Jean said, satisfied. I'll be Miss Mousy, the beautiful bride. Bruce is the frog, and Ramona is Uncle Rat, and now we're going to have a wedding party. Ramona did not want to be Uncle Rat. Mr. Frog, where a wooing go? said sang Willa Jean. Bruce joined in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Apparently, this song was popular in nursery school. Ramona, mm-hmm, too. Say it, Willa Jean ordered Bruce. Willa Jean, will you marry me? sang Bruce. Willa Jean stamped her foot. Not Willa Jean, Miss Mousy. Bruce started over. Miss Mousy, will you marry me? He sang. Yes, if Uncle Rab will agree, sang Willa Jean. Mm-hmm, 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 hummed all three. 
The two nursery school, school children looked to Romano for the next line. Since she did not remember the words used by Uncle Rock to give Mr. Frog permission to marry Miss Mousie, she said, Sure, go ahead. Okay, said Willa Jean. Now we will have the wedding party. She seized Bruce and, and Bruce and Ramona by the hand. Take Bruce's other hand, she ordered Ramona. Ramona found Bruce's hand inside the long sleeve of the old coat. His hand was sticky. Now we'll dance in a circle, directed Willa Jean. Ramona skipped, Willa Jean pranced, and Bruce flapped. They danced in a circle, tripping on Miss Mousie's train and wedding veil, and stumbling over Mr. Frog's slippers until Willa Jean gave the next order. Now we all fall down. Ramona nearly dropped to her knees while Willa Jean and Bruce collapsed in a heap, laughing. Above their laughter and the sound of television, Ramona heard the shouts of the boys outside as they rode their bicycles up and down the street. She wondered how much longer she would have to wait until her mother came to rescue her. She hoped she would arrive before Howie's parents came home from work. Willa Jean scrambled to her feet. Let's play it again, she said, beaming, convinced of her beauty and the, her wedding veil. Over and over, the three sang, danced, and fell down. As, as the game went on and on, Ramona grew bored and varied the words she used to give Mr. Frog permission to marry Miss Mousy. Sometimes she said, See if I care. And sometimes she said, Yes, but you'll be sorry. Willa Jean did not notice. She was so eager to get to the party part of the game where they all fell down in a heap. Still, the game went on over and over, with no sign of Bruce or in Willa Jean's tiring. Then Beezus came in with an armload of books. Hi, Beezus, said Willa Jean, flushed with laughter. You can play too. You can be the old tomcat in this song. I'm sorry, Willa Jean, said Beezus. I don't have time to be the old tomcat. I have homework I have to do. She settled herself at the dining room table and opened a book. Ramona looked at Mrs. Kemp, who smiled and continu continued crocheting. Why did Ramona have to play with Willa Jean when Beezus did not? Because she was younger, that was why. Ramona was overwhelmed by the unfairness of it all. Because she was younger, she always had to do things she did not want to do. Go to bed earlier, wear Beezus' old out outgrown clothes that her mother saved for her, run and fetch because her legs were younger and because Beezus was always doing homework. Now she had to get along with Willa Jean. Her whole family was depending on her, and Beezus did not. Once more, Ramona looked at her book of fairy tales waiting on the chair beside the front door. And as she looked at its worn cover, she had an inspiration. Maybe her idea would work, and maybe it wouldn't. It was worth a try. Well, the Jean, even Bruce will have to excuse me now, Ramona said in her politest voice. I have to do my sustains on the reading. Out of the corner of her eye, she watched Mrs. Kemp. Okay. Willa Jean was not only impressed by a phrase that she did not understand. She had Bruce to boss around. Mrs. Kemp, who was counting stitches, merely nodded. Ramona picked up her book and settled herself in the corner of the couch. Beezus caught her eye, and, caught the, and the two sisters exchanged conspiratorial smiles, while Willa Jean and Bruce, now minus Uncle Rat, raced happily around in a circle, screaming with joy and singing, She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Ramona blissfully read herself off into the land of princesses, kings, and clever youngest sons. Satisfied, the Quimby's had a clever younger daughter who was doing her part. And that was chapter 2 of Ramona Quimby, age 8. Stay tuned for chapter 3.